Pod, pod, podcast playlist. You are listening to Podcast Playlist, a podcast about podcasts, where I, Brendan Hutchins, share what I've been listening to and why you should listen to. This is my third and final episode in a series devoted to S-Town, this time exploring the producers, their backgrounds, and some of their previous work. People know I love podcasts and are asking me all the time, Brendan, what podcast should I listen to? What's good? Any new shows out there? Okay, that doesn't happen. It's more like they're just standing there unaware of what's about to happen to their ears, and I barrage them with, oh man, have you heard about Harmontown? Wasn't last week's Magic Tavern silly? What'd you think of Serial? Few podcasts have penetrated the mainstream the way Serial has. The team behind the biggest podcast success launched their newest show, S-Town, and I told you about that in the previous two episodes. S-Town only took one week to reach 16 million downloads, which is a fourth the time it took Serial Season 2 and an eighth the time it took Serial Season 1. S-Town is the love child of Serial and This American Life, taking after both and standing on its own in a brilliant way. These producers created a new experience for listeners, not only familiar, but also a remarkable blend of genres. Let's go back to the sources and see why their collaboration works so well. This is Brian Reed's first podcast as the full-time host. Previously, he produced a few of my favorite segments for This American Life, including articles from episode 513, 129 Cars, episode 524, I Was So High, and episode 547, Cop See It Differently. Brian's delivery has a genuine and affable quality, and he charms people to acquire the real story that someone may be reluctant to share. On episode 129 Cars, This American Life goes to a car dealership to get the real story about the different tactics salesmen use to meet their monthly quota. Brian tries to interview Manny, the top car salesman on the lot, who wants no part of the radio interview, but Brian persists and finds an opening. Writing about actual war, the book has become well-known in business and sales circles. It's kind of like the seven habits of highly effective people, if that had been written in the 5th century BC on individual strips of bamboo. So I went to the bookstore and bought a copy, and then headed back to town and country. Manny, how are you, sir? Can I show you the homework I've been doing? Please. I handed him my copy of The Art of War, which I'd marked up with notes about its relevance to car sales. I could see why Manny felt that it spoke to his profession. Lines like, draw them in with the prospect of gain, take them by confusion, seemed especially on point. How far you are? Uh, I finished it. You finished it? Okay, I want to ask you a question. What did you learn? What have I learned? Well, I'm here to learn some more. And I was in. For two days, Manny took me under his wing, with my recorder running, and became my sales sensei. Manny's kind of an unusual car salesman, because he has no affection for cars at all. If a customer asks him how much... Brian's ability to read anything his subject throws at him, and that he keeps coming back for more, allows him to get close personal and emotional stories. Similarly, in S-Town, Brian reads John McElmore's recommended short stories by Shirley Jackson, Guy de Maupassant, and William Faulkner the first night they meet in Alabama. Brian just picks up the art of war and jumps back into interviewing Manny, showing his dedication to understanding the subject he's covering. 129 Cars of This American Life actually has a web-exclusive clip by Sarah Koenig, uh, his future partner on S-Town. Sarah Koenig is an award-winning journalist who worked at This American Life for many years, but she may be most well-known for her reporting on what was the biggest podcast before S-Town, Serial. The first season covered the flawed case against Adnan Syed for the murder of Hay Min Lee, The second season focused on the story of Bo Bergdahl, who was charged for leaving his post in Afghanistan. Both seasons of Serial are some of the best podcasting in terms of compelling narratives and amazing reporting. Here's one of my favorite clips from season one, where Sarah is trying to justify the state's timeline to producer Dana Chivas. It's three, say it's between 345 and 350 now in their world. And if I'm Adnan and I need to be seen for track, I'm freaking out right now that I need to get back for track. Yeah. To have an alibi. Right. So what's this like, oh, let's just drive halfway across the county right. to go to a state park to smoke a blunt. Like, just pull up, just smoke in your car. And I don't know. It just seems like there had to be other places you yeah. could have just pulled over for a quick smoke if indeed that's what needed to happen. There's a shrimp sale at the Crab Crib. Sometimes I think Dana isn't listening to me. Anyway, we head to Patapsco State Park because Jay is very clear. 
tape statement number it's one. It's pretty amazing that Sarah explains the scenario so clearly, but this clip also cracks me up and entertains for a few reasons. First, Sarah hints that she may know a thing or two about pot. Uh, second, the producers leave in their human interactions. And lastly, Sarah breaks from the story to comment on her partner, Dana. Such a great show. Side note. If you enjoyed following Hey and Adnan's story from Serial Season 1, check out the podcast Undisclosed, linked in the show notes. Undisclosed is hosted by three lawyers, including Rabia Chowdhury, who originally brought the Adnan case to Sarah Koenig. They dive deep into the minutia of one case per season and uncover all the details that the state fails to reveal in criminal cases against the wrongly convicted. Starley Kine is the story consultant for S-Town. So I'm going to take this opportunity to share her previous podcast, Mystery Show, as it includes long, unedited phone calls, exposing quirks and passions, and has multiple mysteries that have a satisfying resolution similar to S-Town. I hadn't re-listened to Mystery Show until I was pulling clips for this episode, and I forgot how much I love this show. It made me laugh so hard I cried. I just, I love it. Mystery Show is my favorite podcast from 2015. Produced by Gimlet Media for one season, Starley narrates her quirky adventures as she attempts to solve weird mysteries in her guests' lives. The first episode is about Laura, who rents a video from a store, and the next day when she goes to return it, the store is shut down and empty. (laughs) What happened? My favorite episode by far, though, is called Britney, where Andrea, a not-so-well-known author, sees a photo of Britney Spears holding Andrea's book. How'd she get it? Did she like it? Starla goes to awesome lengths to answer these questions and more. This mystery is from Andrea. She's a writer. Can you give a little background about what kind of writer you are? Yeah, (laughs) I'm like a writer. I I don't sell well at all. (laughs) Well, her first book sold okay. People Magazine wrote about it. Then, Andrea's second book came out. It was called To Feel Stuff. No one read my second book, really. Um, It didn't do well commercially, and it didn't get really reviewed or coverage. And I got a Google alert one morning in 2008 from this website, and they had a picture of Britney Spears coming out of a restaurant in Malibu. And she's exiting the back door of the restaurant, and there's kind of paparazzi in it. And she's holding this collection of very intimate things, Mm -hmm. her pack of cigarettes, and then her phone pressed to the cigarettes, and then her lighter. And then she's got my second book. And I I just lost my mind. I really went nuts. Similar to S-Town, many books are mentioned during the episode. Here's a list of books that they could find that Britney Spears has actually read. Look at this. Okay, so Eric just did a quick search, and he said she was on a read poster telling kids to read Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Well, but, she yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she also read Wit Lion, Witch in the Wardrobe. The, the next two are no surprise to me. Yeah, the next ones, I actually hesitate to even say out loud, because it's, <laughs> it's, it's it seems like a little bit of a barb against her. Power of Now and the Secret. Force Whisperer. Mm-hmm. My Way, The Four Agreements. That's got to be religious. Yeah, right? yeah. Taming Chaos. Sounds like self-help. Pride and Prejudice. So she reads fiction. Yeah. Eat, Pray, Love. Candide. Oh. That is a curveball. That is. <laughs> <laughs> but look, she's always seen holding books. 100 Years of Solitude. Yeah. Like, they're never in her bag. Right. The part that I love best about Starley's production style is the long conversation and therapist-style probing questions. In this clip, Starley is talking with a customer service representative for a concert ticket vendor to help with her investigation. I mean, when I was younger, I got in a lot of trouble. Um, You have to be the kind of person that you would want someone to be attracted to. That's true, because if you're not... Even if that person's attracted to you at first, if you don't believe that you're worthy of that person, they're not going to stay interested. That's, that's my problem right there. In the you, don't, you don't think you're worthy? Um, in a sense, no. You are. You have to believe that. Yeah, but I've made a lot of mistakes, too. Who hasn't? I think you think you're not going to get happiness, and so the only way you're going to be able to feel stuff is it's sad stuff. Yeah, Uh you can get addicted to a certain kind of sadness. And what about you? What about me? What about you? (laughs) You don't have any of those problems. I have all. I've done. I've. I do have those problems. That's why I'm able to talk about it because I feel like I can. I can relate. 
there's plenty of times I don't feel worthy and I say mean things to myself and I lose perspective and I get depressed and I totally understand. Mm. Everyone does and that's why that's why you have to start little bits telling yourself I am worthy. I do deserve that. I'm just as good as the other person who's getting it. And so you just have to like trick yourself. It's like subliminal messages to yourself. Yeah. Act as though there's like commercials flashing at you that 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 just keep being broadcast. I mean, you're awesome. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, I've worked here for about eight months, and this is the most interesting home I've had <laughs> ever. <laughs> ever. Ever. <laughs> Oh, so, so you like go around changing other people's, you know, other customer services representatives' lives, <laughs> different companies and stuff. Uh, <laughs> Is that what you do in your free time? Like, <laughs> oh, I don't work today. Let me go change someone's life. <laughs> I just want you to feel worthy. Is that too much to ask? Many of the S Town producers that you don't hear on the show are seasoned professionals from This American Life. Julie Snyder is the executive producer of S Town and is the co-creator of Serial. Before that, she was a senior producer at This American Life. Ira Glass, the host of This American Life, was the editorial advisor for S-Town, as was Neil Drumming, who was the producer at This American Life, often covering race and family. The whole production team is top-notch, and it permeates through almost every moment of S-Town. Through the combined work of many great podcasters, and Ira Glass insisting that Brian record everything always, Pod listeners were able to experience a new level of audio storytelling and start the next chapter of podcasting with S Town. I've seen many requests on Facebook and Twitter and Reddit for other podcasts to listen to that can fill the void after listening to S Town. But for the same reasons that S Town is so special, it's impossible to give a good recommendation for other podcasts. I could list some true crime podcasts or human interest podcasts or narrative podcasts, but none of them have the literature quality. As much as it pains me to say it, to fill the void left by S-Town, you may need to look into audiobooks. I have a link in the show notes for Book Riot's video on what to read after S-Town. Also, I have some recommendations from my wife, Sarah, Truman Capote's In Cold Blood, and Norman Mailer's The Executive Song. They're both close journalistic e- examinations of murderers, great for anyone who wanted more murder mystery than S-Town provided. You can find more about S-Town at stownpodcast.org, and the links will be in the show notes. There's also a Facebook group and a subreddit, r slash Podcast. This concludes the series of podcast playlist just about S-Town. But it doesn't have to be the end of the topic. You can reach out on Twitter. I'm at the pod playlist. If you'd like to support the show and keep the recommendations coming, please visit patreon.com slash podcast playlist. You can sign up for a small reoccurring patronage and get rewards like extra episodes and personalized recommendations. I recently posted two hour-long spoiler episodes of S-Town, where I talk with Yuvi Zalko and David Callison. This episode was recorded in On the Cascadia Fault Line, Portland, Oregon. Writing music and narration by Brendan Hutchins. The producer and script editor was Sarah Hutchins. And moral support and infinite distractions were provided by Sebastian and Autumn. Sarah and my cats. You can go to podcastplayl.ist slash survey, where you can provide your favorite podcasts, as well as give some demographic information like how you listen and how often. This will help curate the recommendation spreadsheet that I have at podcastplayl.ist slash recommendations. Send me your comments, suggestions, and recommendation success stories. I'm at the pod playlist on Twitter. I'll accept text or audio messages to the podcast playlist at gmail.com. You can leave a comment on the post at podcastplayl.ist, or you can also see the show notes. Please subscribe to this feed, rate the show in iTunes, follow at the pod playlist on Twitter, and I will talk to you next time. Happy listening. Peace. Pod, pod, podcast playlist. <laughs>